Hi friends, today we're going to talk about everything I watched in July. That's the month, July. Uh, it was a wild month. It's been a wild couple months for me. Thank you again for all of your support and love on my Grummet video. And yeah, things have been happening with all of that and it's just been very rocky. So I really appreciate everyone here who supports me and watches my videos, all of my patrons, just all of your support everywhere on Twitch, everything I'm doing. Thank you so much for being there for me. I really, really appreciate it. But in saying all of that, I did watch a lot of content this month, so let's get into it. But first, I wanna thank today's sponsor, which is Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN, which stands for Virtual Private Network. Not only can they unblock geoblock content, so you can watch what you want to watch. If it's available in a different country, you can rent it on that platform. And you can see how easy it is. You just type in where you want to be and click the country and even the city option and you're there in seconds. They also protect your identity and your data while you're online. So it's a win-win, but one of the best things about Surfshark is they have unlimited device access. So your one account can be connected through all of your devices. But that's not all, they also have a 30 30-day risk-free money-back guarantee. So if you try the product out and you're not happy with it, you can ask for your money back, no problem. Use my code SPOOKY and the link in the description down below to get yourself 83% off and three months extra for free. Why not try it? You have nothing to lose. Thank you so much to Surfshark for supporting creators like me. And let's get into it. I'm using Letterboxd. Back at the start of the month. <laughs> wow, I watched a lot. Also, I'm really sorry if the lighting changes. I'm just upstairs looking after Gromit during this, so I hope that's okay. Uh, Insidious. I did a whole recap of all of the Insidious films to watch the new one. So if you haven't watched that and you want to get up to date, you haven't gone to see the new film, I highly recommend watching that. Watching it back, I just remembered how much I love this series. I am an Insidious girly over Conjuring. That's my preferred avenue for James Wan, Lee Whannell. I love the idea, the astral projecting, the, the family, the entities, like it's all creepy and you know what you're getting yourself into. Although I went and saw Red Door and I did a Come With Me if you haven't checked that out. So I've done a whole video on this. I was not the biggest fan of that one. I was kind of let down. Um, and yeah, I saw a lot of comments feeling the same. But if you are an Insidious fan, it's definitely worth watching. It's really interesting seeing a lot of returning cast and it is Patrick Wilson's first directorial pursuit and um, I think he did well. I just think the writing was a little bit off and I don't know what I was hoping for, but it was something more than what I got, unfortunately. Um, I watched How to Blow Up a Pipeline. This one was recommended to me by a bunch of people. This is a really um, cool, like kind of drama film about a bunch of environmental, um, I wouldn't really say they're all environmental activists. They all have their own reasoning to being there. They meet and they, you know, start a conspiracy. No, they actually put it into action, which is what they're all about. They're so sick of trying to protest and um, do all this peaceful stuff that they decide to actually make some action. Uh, and it's really well done. Highly recommend it. Uh, very chilling. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was sweating. I was sweating watching this one on the edge of my seat. Uh, I think it, I think it was a good time. I think it was worth it. <laughs> I watched Face Off. I watch this film every now and then and I'm like, how does this film even exist? If you've never seen Face Off, it is the, it doesn't make any sense. It's a movie that does not make any sense, but it's John Travolta playing Nicolas Cage and Nicolas Cage playing John Travolta. They have their faces switched and one is a baddie, one is a goodie. There's a lot more to it. That is a very simple way of putting it, baddie and goodie. <laughs> but it, the, the science in this film, like, blows my mind because it seems like something that could have been done and maybe should be redone by a Cronenberg because the idea that they're swapping faces but yet their bodies also change is just beyond. I just don't know why they didn't change their brains. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, but it is meant to be about an anti-terrorism agent who goes under the knife to look like Nicolas Cage, who's a baddie, um, and then somehow Nicolas Cage also acquires the other guy's body <laughs> and or face, everything, face off. And yeah, if you haven't seen it before, it's the weirdest film ever, um, but it does scratch an itch you never knew you had. It is, it's not a good film at its core, but is it a good bad film? 600% would recommend. I rewatched Promising Young Woman and I did this with my patrons. This was um, someone on my patrons pick. Uh, I forgot how this film ended. I think I've been putting off watching this film again. If you ever have seen it, you would know why. It's a very 
interesting film the way it's paced. Uh, it takes you on a journey that you're an unexpected journey, <laughs> not the Hobbit type. It's very intense. And the first time I watched it, I just didn't know if I could do it again. And then I did it again and I forgot how it ended. And it, it's just the most brutal film. And it's done in such a fantastic, it has such a fantastic route to get to its purpose. And I think it's just, it's, yeah. I don't know how to explain other than that, um, but it is about a woman who is dealing with the trauma of um, the past and uh, is plans to take matters into her own hands to try and get revenge, justice, whatever you want to call it, um, until she meets a man that um, she kind of falls for. So highly recommend this movie to everyone. I'm not clicking on it because I don't want any uh, spoilers, but the soundtrack alone is just worth watching. It's fantastic. The way it's shot is just beautiful, but the soundtrack just gives it the extra punch. Highly recommend. I'm so sorry about the lighting. I know it's going dark again. <laughs> I can't do much about that. Next, I watched Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret. This is one of those uh, <laughs> coming of age films, but it's also one of those coming of age films where they have the most perfect mum and parents, which is just an American staple, isn't it? I, it's kind of, I knew what I was getting myself into. I just wanted an easy watch. I thought it was cute. Um, I really like the themes in this one um, of God and dealing with religion and uh, parents who have or grandparents who have different religions and that idea, because I haven't really seen that tackled. I think that's kind of not taboo, but with the coming of age, it's not something they want to touch on. So I really liked that portion of it. I thought that was really interesting. Um, if you're looking for a good coming of age film um, about, uh, you know, the realization of religion in your life and what that means, it's okay. Um, I watched Bird Box. I did this because I did a recap. I've been doing recaps about um, films. So if you want to figure out what happened in a film that you don't remember too well, without spending two hours doing the rewatch. I know people like rewatching, but if you want to do that to get it fresh in your brain, or maybe you're going to the cinema with someone else and you need to get it fresh in their brain, you've already done your rewatch, but you want me to do the talking, I've got you covered. I did it for Bird Box um, and I remembered how much I liked this film. I think it's a good solid film. I don't know why people give it so much crap. I watched Talk To Me, which I, really adored this film and it's so cool seeing I think it just came out officially there was so many pre-screenings so many um advanced screenings and I watched a couple weeks ago at an advanced screening but there was also pre-screen there was a lot of stuff and now it's officially out uh just seeing everyone's comments and excitement about it is really touching so yeah it was very exciting I didn't give it a perfect score there was things about it that I I really adored and I really adored the concept but I just wanted it I wanted more Part two, please. Uh, but it's definitely worth it. And I know a lot of people say that this is their favorite horror movie of this year. And that makes me so happy. So definitely check it out. It is definitely worth your time. But I have a whole come with me if you want to watch me get into more depth about that. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory was playing on TV. And I'm rarely someone who watches <laughs> movies that are on TV. But my partner started watching it and I just got into it as well. And what a what a movie. This kind of face-off level of how did this exist? It is depressing. It is intense. And there was a character in there I didn't even remember. The little boy, the little boy with the cowboy hat. I, he's never brought up. <laughs> um, but I'm a candy person now. Ever since I went to Japan, I've got like this major sweet tooth. And just watching the film back as someone who adores that now, <laughs> I felt like all of these little kids, you know, like I would have done it as well. I would have maybe not drank from the river, but I definitely would have had some of that gum. I am interested and apprehensive hearing about the Willy Wonka, um, I guess it's a prequel. And I think that's why it was playing on TV. It's a fantastic movie. Um, with all of its flaws, I think that it's a film that that's what makes it special, like the whole Grandpa Joe conversation. I think a lot of that kind of stuff just makes it shine and makes it so unique. And that's what I love about it. It's just the most unique and dark film that is a classic and people don't really see that way all the time. After I watched this, I watched Eyes Wide Shut. The other film I watched was Society, but I did a little bit of a recap on that because I did watch it last month. Um, I did these both for Does This Offend You, which is a stream I do with Nightmare Maven every month. Uh, it switches between our channels and we talk about some, you know, controversial themes in movies where usually we're so focused on the storyline, we don't get to all the nitty gritty stuff. So that's what we like to do in those streams. Eyes Wide Shut is my favorite Stanley Kubrick 
movie. <laughs> I've said this a hundred times and I'll say it again. Nicole Kidman's monologue in it is just the most fantastic thing I've ever seen and so powerful and just always relevant. Uh, if you don't know about Eyes Wide Shut, I know I haven't been really good at describing all of these films so far. A lot of it is because of spoilers, but also I thought like a lot of these are classics. But if you haven't seen Eyes Wide Shut, um, it's basically, well, a lot of people think it's about different things, but I, the, my perspective is it's about a man and wife. Their perception of each other's like sexual endeavors and um, sexuality and um, how that's broken one night by something that his wife talks about and it sends him into this tailspin to try and uh, find himself with you know his own sexual desires. I mean it's a very deep movie and it's a lot of layers and he ends up in this weird sex party. It's a it's a long movie and it's just it's just brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. It was Stanley Kubrick's last film. And I just, I always wonder, I know that he is quite controversial in the way that he creates films or was. I always wonder what would have happened if he was still around. I just, oh my gosh, could you imagine? And then I watched Bird Box Barcelona. I was thrilled by the start of this film or the idea of this film. So the movie basically follows the same timeline-ish. Like they do now and then also go back to the past which is what happens in the original bird box so it's the same kind of formula where we follow a family this time obviously in barcelona and how they deal with these entities that are coming to earth and if anyone looks at them they want to themselves so uh i really enjoyed the start and the setup of this and then there was like a kind of like re i guess a shift in that that was really interesting but then it kind of went downhill i don't know if you're a fan of the original i do still think it's worth a watch it's a little bit more action-packed and all of the action kind of happens in the day. It's not as thrilling. And they move away from the psychological aspect, which I wasn't a huge fan of. But if you're a fan of Bird Box, it might be worth a watch. I just wouldn't highly recommend it. I watched The Loft. I am kind of dark on myself for watching this because I didn't watch the original. I always wanted to see the original, but my partner and I were sitting watching TV one night and we saw this on some streaming platform. And I said, you know what, I'll watch it. I really want to watch the original, but I'll settle for this one because it's more kind of here his vibe, his, um, I guess, speed to, to watch this kind of film. Uh, and wow, you guys hated this film. Uh, I guess the original is so good. And to be honest, I, I mean, I gave it a six. I think it's a really interesting premise, which of course is ripped from the original. Um, this is about a bunch of men who go in together, share a loft um, to do what they want without their wives' knowledge. Um, and then something goes wrong one day and fingers are pointed. That's kind of where I'll leave that. It is like a very twisty turny ride, um, which I love and I could definitely see how the original will be amazing. So I need to go watch that. I need to forget this film and then rewatch it. Maybe the twists are different. Hopefully they are. If you've seen the both, let me know. I watched Biosphere. I'm not gonna, s Ooh, ah! I don't even wanna go into that film. Ah! Why can't it just show me the poster? Okay, it's not showing me the poster. So I just wanna say, Go watch this film. If you like mumblecore, so like more kind of talkative films, um, dramas with a little bit of darkness and comedy, Mark Duplass, if you like Mark Duplass, watch this film. Do not read anything about it, okay? I'm not even going to tell you what it's about. Uh, let me just say it is about two men at the end of the world living in a biosphere. That's all you need to know if you're into more talkative, I guess, philosophical analysis kind of movies. It's lighthearted, don't get me wrong. It's not like this deep, dark pit of, you know, overthinking, but it, it tests the human relationship. And I absolutely adore this film. It was so original, so unique, and it's really easily spoiled. So go watch it now and then you can thank me later if you're into that. Remember, it's going to be slow. It's going to be like more talkative, but... I, I think a lot of you guys will love it. I watched Run, Rabbit, Run. And on, honestly, I saw a lot of people hate this film. I didn't think it was as bad as people were saying. This is an Australian film about a woman and her child. And she returns to her... Well, she has an estranged relationship from her mother. And she goes to visit her mother for the first time. To be really frank, it's about a lot of things. Uh, she returns there and then like kind of the demons of her past. It's one of those films where it's like return to home. All of the mysteries of why someone is the way they are and their relationship with their child is revealed. Uh, I didn't think it was that bad. I saw a lot of people hated this film. Yeah, you can see. 
But I honestly, I kind of knew what I was getting myself into. It was meant to be kind of like a horror thriller, but mostly drama. It's quite dry, don't get me wrong. And it's not something that hasn't been done a billion times, but I like the landscape. I thought that some of the creepy parts were really creepy and I honestly didn't pick the ending. I didn't pick it. So it crept up on me, even though it seems very obvious now um, in hindsight. It's on Netflix, check it out. But I know a lot of people didn't like it, so yeah manage your expectations. <laughs> I watched Barbie. Okay, I did a come with me for my patrons. I gave this film a 10 out of 10. If you're here, you're most likely a Barbie person. If you're not, I'm not sure. <laughs> but Barbie for me, the reason I gave it a 10 out of 10, I mean, so many reasons, flawless design, flawless acting. Um, the script was funny. It was totally unique and um, you could not predict what was going to happen next. Everything I thought was going to happen that seemed predictable all happened within the first, um, I guess, the first act. And then it was just everything just blew up from there. I laughed so hard I cried. I cried so hard I laughed. And um, the main reason is the film is deeply unique, deeply powerful. Um, it caters to people, I wouldn't say people of all ages, but different ways of thinking. <laughs> people probably wouldn't agree with this, but I'm not talking about that way of thinking. I'm talking about it has different messaging in there for different people, mothers, um, women, uh, just humanity and feeling stuff. Uh, and I also, the number one reason is because I don't think there could have been, there is, could have ever been written a better film with this subject matter. Think about Barbie and did you think that was going to happen? Did you think that was going to come out of it? No, I did not think that that that, that was what was going to happen. And, and, you know, I've watched like Frances Ha, like I know Greta Gerwig. I just did not think that that was going to happen. And um, all of it coming together, like it was just a perfect storm and just complete chaos, which I'm a huge fan of. <laughs> so I absolutely loved the Barbie movie and I, I honestly thought it was flawless. Um... It was slow when it needed to be, when it needed to like slow down. And, but then it was action packed at the start. You couldn't even take a breath and like think about what was going to happen next because it was just ever, like it was moving so fast. And I just can't believe they included that much into that runtime. I thought it was amazing. Of course, there's been a lot of discussion online about uh, the themes. I want to urge anyone who hasn't seen the film not to make, you know, any judgments, go watch the film first. Uh, I don't want to say any spoilers, but if you think the film is bashing anyone, you obviously watched the wrong film because <laughs> uh, there's a lot, yeah, there's a lot of focus on different aspects that you may be missing and you definitely would not hear people talk about who it's not in their best favor. Anyway, I'm moving on. Barbie is a joy and let's not bring it down. You know what I mean? Like that is why so annoying, like something so joyous that happened to us that was such a bonus and we never thought this Barbie movie was going to happen people are shitting on it. It's so annoying. Like let people have nice things and enjoy them to the full capacity. I watched The Blackening. I was so sad I didn't, they didn't show this in cinemas here. I thought this was freaking hilarious. I was laughing nonstop. Um, the dialogue, especially in the first act is so tight, um, so funny. And the characters are just really uh, vibrant. I really liked the banter between everyone. I thought it worked really, really well. It is a straight up slasher, which isn't usually my cup of tea, but I really enjoyed what it did. I guess I didn't watch any trailers because it wasn't coming out to cinemas here. So I was really, really impressed with uh, what, what came because I just didn't even know it was about a game. If you haven't seen it. It's about a bunch of friends, I believe from college, and they get back together. They're at an Airbnb and they find this really intense uh, game that is both confusing and very alarming um, because of its racial stereotypes or history that, yeah, just visually it's, it's, it's alarming. And from there, they're kind of trapped in this game, this cat and mouse game with someone who is controlling the board game. It's got action, it's got good gore, it's thrilling and it's funny. Um, and again, on intent, that's why I rated it four because I was like, intent wise, this kind of like knocks it out of the park. Is it usually my kind of thing to love like comedy kind of slashes? No, but the intent of this film was like perfect. So I really, really enjoyed it and I can see where the hype came from. I watched The Stepford Wives. You know, I just wanted some Nicole Kidman goodness as always. And uh, this is such a weird rewatch. Glenn Close in it is just fantastic. Everyone knows the story of Stepford Wives. I think that this is a classic. 
Uh, there's definitely a lot of really awkwardness in the film, but sometimes they lean into that. There's this amazing scene that I totally forgot where they're showing this, this TV pops up out, out of nowhere. It was actually a painting in one of the houses. And then it turns back to a painting after it shows whatever it's showing to the characters. And then some guy in the back yells out, it's a painting again. And I don't know why, just like little moments like that just make these movies, I guess from the 2000s, early 2000s that are just so random, but in fun ways. And this whole film had me laughing by like reactions or just different um, one-liners, punchlines that, that were going on. It just makes, elevates it like slightly. It's a fun movie where you kind of know exactly what's gonna happen. Although there are like, you know, one or two little turns in it, but um, yeah, it's easy watch and fun. Very strong messaging as well. Um, I watched Cobweb, which I did a whole review on. I was so lucky to be able to get a screener for this because it's not available in Australia. So I'm so thankful. If you want to go watch that video, please do. And thank you to everyone who did. I really appreciate you guys. Um, I watched Joyride. I went to the cinema. I actually got time away from the house from watching my dog. And I said, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to the cinema. And this was the only film that basically... Uh, was playing at that time and I watched Joyride. I loved so many parts of this film. It was so much more raunchy than I expected. The film is about two best friends at its core who live in America and they go to China for this, uh, I guess like a business trip. And there they kind of get in themselves into a situation where one of the girls, she was adopted from China and she goes to go visit her her mom, her biological mother. And yeah, a lot of hiccups along the way. The whole film is about like all of the mistakes, kind of like, you know, it's Joyride. It's about, you know, those wild weekend movies where everything that can go wrong goes wrong. Uh, it's wild, it's wacky, it's over the top, it's unbelievable, but I think that's kind of the point. Um, it does have a good messaging to it, but the raunchiness is just so intense in parts. Yeah, I think it's fine to watch, it's fine for a silly fun movie, but I felt like some of like the silliness took off the edge for me or just went a little bit too far and or maybe just not my sense of humor. But I, I mean, it was still very cute. Um, I watched The Invisible Man. This is another rewatch I did with my Patreons. Uh, another one that I kind of was putting off. I think I've watched it twice now. So, I mean, this is my third time watching it. Lee Whannell, if you have not seen The Invisible Man, Elizabeth Moss, always great. Um, and she is haunted by the thought of her ex who she believes is in the room with her constantly following her and ruining her life for the second time after escaping an abusive relationship. Very strong themes, very intense movie. The camera work is phenomenal. The idea of someone being there and the way that the camera like pans to no one and you never know if there is or isn't someone. It's just psychologically, um, the way they make this film work is fantastic. And then you even think about how they use the special effects in this film and I won't ruin it, but there's just some masterful scenes and yeah. Love this film. The Meg. I rewatched The Meg, which I will be putting up a little recap video because I'm watching The Meg 2. I was like, do I do a come with me for The Meg 2? But I looked back and I did a come with me for the first Meg. So we're going to do a come with me for The Meg 2, which I'm seeing next week. Um, but there will be a recap up of the first film, which I had to rewatch to like remember because some of the same characters return. But I saved you two hours and I will have that recap video up very soon. I watched Quicksand. This is a new one on Shudder. I was hoping this was gonna be great. One of you guys messaged me and said you knew someone in this film and I was like, I want it to be great. It took so long for them, I'm gonna be real. It took so long for them to get into the quicksand. <laughs> the movie is called Quicksand, the poster, come on. The movie is about a couple who are on the rocks, definitely on the rocks and they get caught in quicksand and it just was not satisfying at all. Like it was boring somehow, slow, really convoluted. Like it didn't make any sense. The wild way they got to the quicksand, they just could have made it so much more simple and easy to digest and then make it more of an impact on their relationship than trying to like put in all of these puzzle pieces to try and get them into this very strange situation. I just, it didn't gel with me. I wouldn't recommend it. And the last film I watched, uh, I finished last night is Tin and Tina. This is a Spanish film that, my God, is it the weird, one of the weirdest things that ever existed about a couple who uh, go through a tragedy and then they decide to adopt these two strange kids. And even when they pick them up from, um, they're at a church, when they pick them up from there, <laughs> from like the orphanage of the church, uh, they go, these kids are weird. Like imagine adopting two kids and being like, these weirdos can come home with us, which the fact that they're already thinking that they're strange is beyond. Anyway, these kids are obsessed with religion. They just are evil. They're evil, but they don't know it. And it's like this weird in between of like, they mean well, but they, uh, they really don't 
I mean, they translate the Bible to be literal. So it causes a lot of problems. If you're sensitive and you're thinking about watching it, you may want to look up some themes and some possible spoilers uh, because it does get pretty brutal. There are some jaw-dropping, nail-biting scenes, don't get me wrong, but it's just one of those films that is so ridiculous that sometimes it feels like it's uh, making fun of like evil kids in movies. So I found it to kind of be funny, but it's very intense. So it was a very strange mix. But at the end of the day, like there was just some really odd themes in it that made it one of those, again, as I said, I love those kind of like odd films that just have this unique aura to them because they don't make any sense why they exist. And this is one of those films. It is a long film, so I don't know if I'd recommend it to everyone. And again, it does have intense themes, but if you're into creepy kids, it's not a bad watch. Very predictable, but also uh, the intense dramatic scenes like the, when I say dramatic I mean more like horror I'm trying not to spill any spoilers but um those scenes are pretty hard to watch so good luck good luck have you has anyone seen Tin and Tina let me know if you have I only watched really two tv shows this month which is very strange for me but uh the first one I attempted to watch was The Clearing this was a new Australian series um that was coming out week to week on Stan which is an Australian platform but I think it would have been oh no it wasn't on Stan sorry it was on Disney plus um I think it would be available in Star in America. Um, but this show, it has Teresa Palmer and it's about her as an adult, but going back into um, this cult that she grew up in. It's meant to be based on a cult that was in Australia. Um, of course, it's like loosely based and I'm not even sure what facts are real or not. So it's kind of hard to be amazed by it when you're not really sure where it's towing fantasy and reality or like, I guess, um, impacted by it and think it's very dramatic. It was a very slow, <laughs> it's a very slow TV show. And I wasn't sure what the point was, but I think that that was kind of the point because there's so much nu nuance in the idea of growing up somewhere and being raised by someone who you think of as dangerous and where the line is for you as I guess someone who loved someone who is deeply flawed <laughs> to say the least they're dangerous so I think that that was the point but it really had a roundabout way of getting to it and I felt like it should have been more of a mini series or movie I lost interest in it incredibly fast and I actually stopped watching it I think I got to episode five and I just like there was nothing going on absolutely nothing just conversations going round and round and round um there was no conclusion there was nowhere that there was gaps that I was waiting to find out part of the story it kind of was all there yeah it was I was kind of really disappointed by this one let me know if you've seen it as well the other tv show that I watched which is like a 10 out of 10 is the bear I had not even seen the first season so I was lucky enough that I timed it I got to watch the first and the second season um the second season has just come out in Australia and it came out like a week ago so um on the sorry it was I think it was the 19th it came out and we watched it all like straight away and yeah both seasons we've watched all in one day if you've not seen the bear it is phenomenal it is anxiety central though so if you want to have a glass of wine while you're watching it I would <laughs> I would recommend um it is about a chef um who goes to uh, revamp um try and pick up the pieces of his his late brother's restaurant and season one is like kind of like part one and then season two is part two and I just want like 20 seasons because it's it's just really interesting. The characters are very charismatic <laughs> um, and they all have these individual, it's just like such a well-rounded show. And from, from where you get from season one to season two, it's such a good payoff. They're also really short episodes. I think they're only like around half an hour to 40 minutes long, if I'm correct. And it's just so bingeable and you just want to because it's, yeah, it gives you such a interesting feeling. It's very challenging to watch, but um, the payoffs are so immense. Uh, so I really, really enjoyed it. And just the arcs of the characters from season one to season two, just to show how incredible the writing is for this TV series, um, how people change before your eyes and it happens so gradually and just so well. They just do it so well that you don't even notice until you kind of look back and you realize how far you've come. <sighs> I love it. I love it. It makes you really hungry watching it sometimes. So. <laughs> but I would highly recommend The Bear if you haven't seen it. If you have, it's a drama. I, yeah, I would say straight up drama. I wouldn't really say comedy, even though it is kind of funny. Uh, so if you have like a family member that you don't watch horror with, I highly just recommend checking that out. Um, yeah, it's just so well filmed and the acting and the writing, it's got the whole thing. So thank you for bearing with me through the 
<laughs> the colors changing. I know it was a lot, but I really appreciate you guys being here and thank you so much for watching another wrap up. Let me know down below what you watched this month and what you think was fantastic and I should check out. I've been adding stuff to my watch list like no tomorrow. So if you have anything that you think that I'm missing, um, that hopefully is out in Australia. A lot of stuff isn't. Oh, Oppenheimer. I should have said something about that. I'm sure I'll get lots of comments about that. I am going to go see it. Uh, I just haven't, I was going to go with my partner. He really wants to go see it. And, um, he, we both really haven't been able to get out of the house at the same time for that length of time, um, because of Gromit. So we will be going to go see it, uh, maybe this weekend or I think next week, actually, we'll be able to go see it next week. So, I will be seeing that and I'll probably do a Patreon come with me for that because I don't know why Barbie and Oppenheimer is like the big thing and uh, sometimes over on my Patreon I, bl I break the horror rules and we do a little bit of you know more personal other things I'm into so anyway I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll talk to you all very soon stay safe and stay spooky bye friends <laughs> <laughs>